Good morning, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to my channel, my name is Chrissy, and today I'm gonna to be giving you a prediction reading for the 11th of November. Now, as most of us here know, that's Remembrance Day, which is the 11th of the 11th. I am here with my little cat, blind cat. She's actually fully blind, Charlie. Um, she's just come to say hello. I'm shooting from my black lounge room, guys, and you'll be very happy about that. Um, I'll give you a little quick look how it's looking. Oh, that's my coffee cup. It's coming together. I'm even painting my TV unit. Look, I'm turning it black as well. Uh, everything's going to be black. And oh, and there's Charlie having a visit. <laughs> oh, hello, Charlie. Good morning. So I'm going to have all these really nice, like, plush fabrics. And I'm going to have gold. And oh, look, I bought this lovely throw rug. Um, Louise, you bought some new throw rugs. I bought this throw rug. It was on special. So I got a nice black and white cosy throw rug, even though it's very hot here today. I've got to put my air conditioning on. We're having 32 degrees here today, which that, guys, is very hot um, here down under. <laughs> That's very hot for us. I live in a very dry climate. We don't have humidity. So you can kind of cope with it because the drier heat's much better than the um, humidity like moisture. And we haven't had much rain. Not like you guys. Oh, you're getting a nice close-up of Charlie. <laughs> oh, pets. Never work with what? Pets and kids, isn't it? Animals and kids, what do they say? Oh, my goodness. She'll wander off soon, I'm sure. Anyway, at least she's not doing her echolocation squawking like a parrot um, noise that she normally makes. Um, right, guys. Cheers, everyone. I've got my coffee. It's Saturday morning here. I'm going out soon to the nursery with my hubby to buy some tomatoes to put my tomato plants in rather, because um, we've our frost have finished here now. Now, I've got a little bit of <laughs> pets. You've got to be able to do everything at the same time, haven't you? But as a mum, being a mum, you learn to do this, juggle everything. Um, okay, first off, yes, I want to acknowledge Remembrance Day. It's a huge event. I know a lot of you in the UK have been asking Adam, etc., about about um, what's going to be happening with these Israel pro, um, Israel Palestine events, look, I'll, my advice is to stay away from it. It's going to kick off. How can it not? Um, and already here, in, yes, of course, it's always in Melbourne, the most locked down city in the world here in Australia, which is the state of Victoria. Um, huge protests in Melbourne around Israel Palestine. Um, they showed it on the news this morning. It's already getting volatile because the anger is rising up in people. Remember what I said yesterday, guys. It's an opportunity for people to vent their anger. Um, so stay out of it. And, of course, Melbourne's got the old caps. It can spray out again. We know the police down there are very good at uh, controlling protests. Even though they're allowing them to do it, I don't get it. They have rules for one group and then different rules for others. So Because we know Dictator Dan brought in the rules about protesting and all this kind of stuff. Um, anyway, enough of that. Um, the other thing is I just wanted to say thank you, Martin and Refluxin, Refle Reflections. I think it's Reflections, isn't it? Is that how you say it? Um, thank you, Martin. You're always very good at getting back to me with <laughs> things that I don't know. And the name of the German leather pants I was trying to think of yesterday is called Lederhosen. Is it Lederhosen? It's probably Lederhosen. I did actually study German at school. So our feet are saying, anyone that speaks German, um, Leader, I'm guessing it's leader hosen. That's those leather um, mountain climbing. <laughs> well, they're not mountain climbing, but they're the. That's the visual I had. The leather shorts with the brace braces um, that the Germans wear during. Well, it's just a German outfit, isn't it? I don't know. It's like a sort of. I don't know what it is really. Is it a mountain climber's outfit? Anyway, that's the visual I had of Trudeau wearing those when he was going to climb his big mountain and be the king of the mountain yesterday i hope you went and checked out that midnight oil song king of the mountain at least you'll have a laugh guys funny as when i got that song i did find it very funny all right how about we get straight into the reading guys oh i forgot to bring cards along i might have to grab some when we come to the card reading for everyone all right let's um, close our eyes get started and we'll see what comes up looks like charlie's going for a wander I'm getting like the hurdles are up now for these government elites. They are. We got them all having target practice at the archery, um, doing the archery yesterday with 
Klaus Schwab, the oh, Cotton Schwab rather. Now I'm getting that the little people are putting the hurdles back up. So every time these global elites put knock knock their hurdles over, for example, um, the little people, peasants and Lego people, which is all of us, we all quickly flick them back up. So we've, it's like we've got people manning the hurdles in this big running race of the global elites. And every time they knock them down, we put them back up. We put them back up. So they've always still got hurdles to jump. This is what the little people are starting to do now. They're starting to put, um, that. well, they're starting to work together. That's what I'm getting about the little people and peasants, which is all of us. We're all starting to work together. Um, in, in this in these fight backs and it's not just us on this channel guys it's everybody everybody's starting to work together because people don't want to be controlled i don't know how people in china actually cope with that i'm oh, sorry charlie's very high maintenance um i don't know how people would want to live like we call it panda here which is the big communist country that Xi ping runs i don't know why anyone would want to live in a dictatorship but i guess if we look at the bigger picture People who are born there don't know anything different. It's like anything. If that's all you know, that's all you know. Um, so people don't want it. So all it's showing me little people on the sides just flipping up the hurdles again so the government still has to jump these hurdles. We're not making it easy for them to roll this out. And I think we could all agree that that is the case, especially for poor little old Sushi, who's tried very hard to implement his ULA's tracking and all this kind of lecky car business. Oh, and it didn't really work out. So he's had to go away back to 10 Downing Street and do his, or redo his blueprints, I was saying the other day. So I feel like people are really working together now to try and stop these things. Um, <clears throat> was it you, Louise? And an example of this would be, Louise, you've always got brilliant stories for me. I was telling you guys about the one Louise had with her driving past the broken down Tesla in a naughty car. Well, yesterday, Louise, you were telling me about you went to the coffee shop and this policeman, I'll just tell the short version, was obviously awake. You were having a conversation with him and then this other woman sort of interjected and then she was asleep, but then she started to wake up and he must have had the gift of the gab at explaining it to her. So this is what I'm saying. People are starting to spread the word. They're talking amongst themselves. You know, what a great thing to witness, Louise, seeing somebody. Uh, oh, sorry, Charlie nearly knocked the phone over. Of course. Um, seeing somebody else out there telling the truth, and you can just sit back now and observe that. And this is, excuse me, guys, this is the role we have to play. We have to be the observers. Um, yes, we can sort of be there and be present and put our energy on it, but you you did the perfect thing, Louise. You just let this guy take the reins and explain to this woman. It's brilliant. So other people are seeing it, guys. That proves it. That means this crime investigation board, people are starting to wake up. And I think by the end of that conversation, you actually stated that the woman was actually coming around to how did he know all this? And she started asking questions. And that's what you want because then she'll go and talk to someone else. It's, it's the domino effect. You know, people start to wake up. It was like the... Um, I'm sorry about Charlie. It was like the Ottawa Canada event. You know, Ottawa stood up, the truckies stood up, fought back against Trudeau and his dictating methods. And then what happened? The rest of the world stood up. New Zealand, UK, everywhere. Australia, we stood up. Everywhere stood up. It was unbelievable. That woke the rest of the world up. So it's this domino effect. So that's why I'm getting this hurdles. People are starting to work together now. It's so good, guys. It's beautiful. Um, and it's funny because I was in the car yesterday, guys, and you know how we've been getting a lot of this um, Fleetwood Mac songs and we had, I think, Songbird and Landslide or something yesterday. So we get so much music here, guys, if you're new. Um, and, and I was just driving along, and you know what song came on that I just hadn't even thought of and the guides hadn't given me, but well, obviously they did because it came on on my radio. Oh, not my radio, my Spotify. And it was that song, Big, Big Love. And you know how yesterday we were talking about that, um, the globe blowing up like whoosh, 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 and being pumped up because the, everyone's expanding and the whole world is expanding at the moment going through this awakening and the shift and it was that big big love that song i want you to go and play that song today big big love by fleetwood mac um because that's what's happening it's this big love frequency vibration that's happening 
Maybe that's why the guides gave it to me. Um, but go and play that today. And it's got something about the house on the hill. Well, just go and listen to it. I think it'll be really interesting because that's the vibe I'm getting. Big, big love, the song by Fleetwood Mac, because that's what's really happening. We're moving into that vibrational frequency. People are no longer living from their headspace. They're being, well, it's not that they're being forced. They're being woken up to live from their heart space, a more feeling place. Because people have lost um, their, their, well, they've lost their gift to feel. You know, we got that song by Robbie Williams yesterday. I don't want to feel real love in the home that I live in. You know, people have lost their, their way to feel. They, because people numb themselves down, they dull themselves down. Um, people go numb over time. You know, if you've been hurt or you've had a rough childhood, you learn not to be emotional. You know, boys are taught that from a young age. That's another example. Don't you cry. Don't you be emotional. That shows weakness. That's just an extreme example. Um, so that's what I'm getting. People are having to, and there's nothing wrong with showing your emotions or, or feeling your emotions. See what's been suppressed in people for many, many life or well, many, many years or their whole life is now emerging. That's why a lot of it comes out as anger because everybody deals with their emotions differently. Um, gosh, a lot of us women just cry and cry and cry, don't we? Like that's what, how we release a lot of things and that's how we cope everyone's different everybody is different i said that yesterday so we've got this big big love frequency vibration that's starting to emerge it's brilliant all right oh, i need to i need my coffee this morning and there's some beautiful um throw rugs around this one's so cute and so soft i love soft things it makes your house feel cozy and we know our homes are our havens don't we guys so you've got to have things around you that make you feel nurtured <laughs> um okay i'm getting grease again oh, i've had grease for a while i've had grease like the hawaii thing um a very similar experience but i'm getting that grease um oh, i feel like the whole grease thing is getting a little over the top now we don't hear much about this do we but i do believe there's a little bit going on when it comes to the global elites in greece as in taking over i keep talking about the like they want their beautiful resort tropical islands to themselves we often compare it to the epstein island not so much that concept probably or you would hope not but they want somewhere they can just fly and there's no other poor people and peasants there. This is a global thing. Um, I, we do have questions around Maui, guys, if you're new to this channel, because it was very suspicious what went on with those fires there. Um, but I've also been having that for Greece a lot. Um, actually, they showed Elbow last night on some island signing some treaty oh, i can't remember where it was cook islands or where it was guys i was talking about them the other day i'll get back to you on that it just reminded me he had the old hawaiian shirt on and was doing his island hopping elbows off again somewhere where's he off to he jet sets in and then he jet sets out he's not even in australia how do you run a country when you're not even in the country you're everywhere else but here oh yeah but don't face the cost of living crisis or all the you know out of control youth crime going on in Queensland or anything. Don't address any of that. Just, you know, jet set around the world. So this Greece, Greek island thing getting back to would make sense to us. Um, so I'm still getting those issues around this in Greece. I'm just getting that. We'll probably hear more down the track, I would say. But I am still getting Greece. Very similar energy to the Hawaiian Maui event. I've even had Fiji a couple of times, haven't I? Ooh. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I'm getting Solomon Islands. Of course I am. I told you that Ping took over Solomon Islands. Uh, I think Solomon Islands is above New Zealand, isn't it? Somewhere, I think it's over there somewhere. I get a bit muddled up. I've got to get this globe, guys, and then we can point to it on the... I could probably point to it for you. That's what I might do <laughs> and share things with you. Um, so I'm getting this... Uh, see they wanted to turn it into like a military base and it, australia was all upset about it apparently because china was going to be too close to australia but 
I feel like now um, the Solomon Island people are really hurting now. They're realizing what's going on. And I remember at the time when Xi Ping went over and signed documents virtually taking over the island, I guess, with their leader, I remember thinking, oh, that leader, he's corrupt. But then the people stood up and fought. And then Australia sent a heap of military over there to settle down the people because the people were protesting about it. And Australian military went over and shut them all down and squashed all the protests and everything and took control of the island. Uh, so we know Elbow works with Zeping in these situations. So I am getting Solomon Islands that the people are very disappointed at the outcomes. See, you think about it. People living on a beautiful tropical island, they wouldn't understand what was really going on. They're probably not in touch with all of this because that's not the world they live in. They live in that beautiful, natural, simplified world of, you know, picking coconuts and having a beautiful walk on the beach. Like, what could be better? And then suddenly you've got China moved in with their military presence on your island that you've probably lived on for generations through. So the people over there are quite shocked. They're very disappointed. Um... And they, they feel really helpless. That's what I'm getting for Solomon Islands. This is so sad, isn't it? It's so sad what's going on globally. It is. Mm, it's very frustrating too, guys. All right. Let's see where else we go. I'm getting islands. Is there islands off Morocco? Oh, I'm getting Moroccan islands. Um, oh, God, I'm hopeless at global things, and I, guys, sorry. Um, hmm, I'm just getting them. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping if there is Moroccan islands or something like that, it's not going to be a Maui situation. Oh, I'm getting all the islands at the moment. Mm. See, we've got to remember, guys, as much as all this you know, resetting everything and that is going on as well globally. They're also looking to set up their little paradises. I keep saying it, I've been saying it forever, for probably two or three years. Um, they're wanting to set up their little paradises. They don't want to live in the bur is it the burbs? What's that word they call like the suburbs with all the normal people? They want to have places that they can go and escape um, and be stress-free. We know that Trudeau likes to do this, go to a tropical island and escape. Um, but I am getting that, um, the Moroccan islands. Don't know, I'm just going to leave that at that at the moment. Because um, it's a real paradise too. I don't know where that is, Morocco. All right, it's time for me to get a globe. We know that, guys. I'll look into that next week. <laughs> Now, hopefully my globe will appear and I can show you where everything is because I'm sure a lot of you guys, too, are perfect at knowing where all everything is. None of us are. We all live in different parts of the country, don't we? Um, so, anyway, I'm just getting this island. There's a lot going on around islands. Tropical islands. All right. And I'm also getting, like, that Mediterranean... They like the med. Th these global elites, you know, they like the Mediterranean lifestyle. Is what I'm getting. They like the the feel of it. That's what they like. It's that kind of vibe that they would like to create. Most of them. That's just what I'm getting. That must be how a lot of them unwind. Um. Yeah, they like good food and wine and relaxing. Ugh. God, it's so frustrating, frustrating, isn't it, Riley, guys? As they ruin all of our lives and just take us all down to nothing. Unbelievable. All right, let's keep going. They have no conscience, these people. They do not even care. We know they've got no empathy and they don't sympathise at all with the little people. It's actually horrible, isn't it? Um, let's see if there's anything else. Hang on, guys. No, I'm getting Australia. Of course I am. I'm getting Australia's like the capital of fools now. Australia's looking really foolish. Oh, I wonder why. Um, I feel like the little people, they just feel foolish and stupid. See, it's like I said yesterday, was it, guys? 
who, why would anyone have voted Elbow in? I don't know. I, ne I don't vote Labor. That's just me. Because every time Australia get, has Labor in, <laughs> the country goes down the toilet. Um, so now all these people that have voted for Elbow, which is probably unlikely to be anyone here on my channel, I'm guessing, um, that lives here in Australia, they feel foolish. They feel like they made a mistake. They trusted him. They listened to him. I told you that he lied about everything and he caught him because of his wonderful lies. And he hasn't done anything. And like I said, he's off um, traveling all around the globe, having a wonderful time. I'm sure he's having a little bit of time to himself too. It's not just, you know, I'm sure he's probably doing a bit of sightseeing. He was out walking in bloody Panda the other day. He was just out having a lovely walk by the water. Unbelievable. And I feel like now Australians feel really foolish, like they've been completely sideswiped. It's like elbows sideswiped him in a car and they've run off the road. That's what I'm getting. That's how Australians feel. Um, and I'd say that's everybody. Even around the yes, no vote, I'm getting even the Indigenous Aboriginal people feel like they've been sideswiped by elbow. He was push, 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 going to do all this yes in Parliament vote. And then that went south, so they've got pushed off the road. It's just never ending. And so now I feel like the majority of Australians down here feel absolutely foolish. Like they've been taken for a ride and they've been sideswiped by their government, which they have because they were totally lied to. Uh, like I said yesterday, why would anyone trust any global leaders or any parliamentary presidents, prime ministers? They always lie. They cannot be trusted. I think... Over history of time, we kind of know that. Oh, I mean, seriously, if any of you can name one that you think has been very honest and really done their job really well, write it down below because we'd all love to hear from you, from you if you could even name one. I don't think any of us could. Hmm. You know, the only one I could say that maybe mildly was John Howard. And he wasn't perfect. But I've got to give it to him. He kept interest rates really low. And my hubby and I managed to pay our house off. Like, that's a big deal. Because he kept the interest rates so low, we had a couple of years, or he was in for quite a while, and we were able to, Australians, not just me, but Australians were able to get ahead because he was liberal and he kept the interest rates really low. When the interest rates are high like this, no one's got even half a chance of getting ahead. It's pathetic. It's terrible. So that would be the only one I would say that I would even have an inkling of maybe positivity about would be John Howard. And you guys might not even know him. Or you might. Um. Anyway, write it down below if anyone can actually think of anyone who's... And let us know why, you know. It's interesting because it's not easy. I'm not saying Ch Turdo's name going to be down there very <laughs> I don't think we'll see that written much down below. But anyway, and maybe not sushi. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, we're definitely not going to see Jabsinda. Anyway, always good for a laugh, old Jabsinda. Sorry, guys, I've got to post some things to my Facebook page. I haven't forgotten some of those videos about Jabsinda at Earthshot doing her thing, saving the world still. Oh, she's still up there. All right. Let's see if there's one more thing and then we'll pull some cards for you guys. God, they keep giving me earth shot. Hang on a minute. Oh, well, they're showing me earth shot. Uh, which is William's little baby. That's William from the Royal Kardashians, if you're wondering who I'm talking about. And it's apparently to save the planet. What does Earthshot actually do? Does anyone actually know? Are they the ones putting the lovely algae ponds around the uh, UK instead of uh, trees, chopping the trees down in the cities and putting algae ponds like fish tanks in? Um, what does Earthshot actually do? Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to do some research on this, guys. Earthshot. Like, why would they call it Earthshot? And it's funny, isn't it? When you think of the word Earthshot, you just think it's them shooting down the earth, like Earthshot. Like are they, and again, I get that visual of the bullseye. I remember I told you they were all doing target practice yesterday at the archery um, bullseye targets. 
Well, you know, obviously William's shooting at his target with trying to make a good shot, like earth shot. It's kind of a strange word, isn't it? Mm. I wonder what it means. I'm going to have to look this up, guys, because they keep just putting earth shot in front of my face and they, the guides are going, look at it, look at it, earth shot, earth shot. Well, I guess if the reset gets in the earth is shot, it's pretty much effed, isn't it? But I don't know. Let me know what you think, guys. And let me know what they actually do. Because all I'm seeing is a heap of bloody Muppets getting together and just talking about how they're all going to save the planet and they're all doing the right things. Just like Jab Cinder did the other day in that Clown <laughs> Planet video where she said it can't just be, you know, all of us people, meaning, you know, the global elites and all the important people above us, you know, those ones, um, doing everything, you know, the little people have to be sort of held accountable too. So we've got to also play our part is what she was saying. So I don't know. I don't know what they do. Are they just talking about, obviously, you would think it would be about renewable energy and all this kind of thing, which as we all know here, there's also another side to the whole renewable energy world. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about the lecky cars and the batteries exploding and blowing up and catching on fire and all the landfill that comes from solar panels and the wind turbine um, creations that affect the animals out at sea and also the, the vibrational aspects of all these things. But no, don't talk about that, I'm sure, Earthshot. So if anyone knows what the hell goes on with that... Let us know down below because it's a little bit of a question mark, isn't it? Mm, it's funny that they're giving me the name Earthshot. It's weird, actually, isn't it? It's weird. It just sounds weird. Mm. Anyway, um, let me see if there's something else, guys, and then we'll pull some cards. I have to grab them out of the drawer. I forgot to get them today. You know how organised I can be? Oh, I am. I'm getting the UK is saturated with rain. You guys have been telling me how saturated you are. You are getting so much rain. I think you had a dry day the other day, Louise. You were telling me you could get out in your garden. But you've had endless, endless rain. We're not getting hardly any rain here. Um, we are getting like maybe a day a month. Not even that. And it's not even heavy. It's like a really light drizzle. So it's not even enough to soak anything. Like all the lawns are really dry. And of course, you've got to pay for your water so no one's got nice lawns now what has happened to our lives guys how can water how can water not be free i don't even get this anyway i'm sure you guys ask the same questions but uk is saturated it's showing me like a sponge that is completely saturated and full of water um what are they up to up over there i know sue you were telling me about now they're even using drones um, because people were getting sick of the planes flying around. We have planes flying around here. I think sometimes they're trying to spot fires, but it's really annoying. They'll go around your house and over and on a beautiful quiet day when you're trying to find stillness, um, there's planes flying around. It's like, you know, that's, isn't that emitting emissions? I would think. So, yeah, you were saying now they're turning to drones because people were waking up to the planes. <laughs> oh, it's so obvious to us all this. Is it geoengineering? What do you call it? And they're playing around with the weather. But you guys are saturated. You're like an absolute full sponge of water that's so saturated. Um, it, it can't absorb anymore. So you guys are getting massive amount of rain. Um, hang on a minute. I'm not seeing floods though. I just see rain saturation. Geez, you want to get your water tanks, guys, over there. And that'll save you a fortune in paying for water if you get your water tanks. I'm thinking of getting a couple just to keep my veggies up because we know if this water prices keeps going up, it's going to be even hard to grow your homegrown veggies, isn't it, guys? Because they take quite a bit of watering to keep them really nice. Like, hmm. They certainly put a lot of hurdles in front of the little people, don't they, these government elites? It's very frustrating. So I am getting that. The UK is bursting with water. There's just so much water. Um, you're at saturation point. That's what I'm getting. 
Oh, my God. And it's like I say to you guys, if you're going to muck around with the weather, you don't know what it's going to create because Mother Nature is very unpredictable. We know that here. So they have to, I think they're going to realise soon, they're going to have to stop. <laughs> they're going to have to stop trying to control the weather because I feel like things are coming left of field that are also creating more problems. And I keep saying that if you're going to muck around with clouds and do all this kind of cloud seeding and things like this, you know, and suddenly this wind comes along and then it creates 10 times more than what you thought you were going to create, which could happen. We don't know. There's a lot of unpredictable sort of variables in this. Um, and then it ends up creating more disasters. So I don't know. I just don't think the weather manipulation is a really good idea. I mean, I get it. I get it. Like, I live near snowfields. And I understand it. Sorry, guys. And I understand it because they want to have full ski seasons all about money and the dollar. But I still think it's wrong. And the weird thing is living where I do, and I know a lot of you guys are probably the same who live near mountains or anything, there is less and less snowfall pretty much every year. Like, our season's closed early. It's never heard of. I've lived here for 22 years, never heard of them closing like that early. They closed like two weeks early because there wasn't enough snow. They shut all the chairlifts down. It was mad. And you do think, well, is that because the weather's been that manipulated that it's starting to have an effect on the natural? Like we were talking about yesterday, I think I was talking to you about that. Um, Chris, we are talking about the cycles. You think about it, the weather even has a cycle, doesn't it? You know, it rains and then it dries up and it goes back up to the clouds and then it rains and it dries up. Like there's cycles for everything. And when you're interrupting that cycle with your geoengineering or whatever it is, it's going to affect that process. I think that's what the guides are trying to say to us. Very strange. And, you know, of course they're going to blame global warming because that's all part of the narrative. Um, it, it It's what they're trying to create, isn't it? Why you would do this, I do not understand. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Do you guys ever ask those questions? Like, like I always do. I just have so many questions, but that's what the BS detectors do here, don't we? Like, why are they doing this? Why do we need to have all renewables? Like, why do we have to talk about everything to do with climate? Like, why? We know it's BS. We know it's BS. So why, why? I know it's control. I get it. I know it's control of the little people. And, and I guess they always test to see how much they can gain control of us and get people to comply and do as they're told. But I still don't kind of get all for what? Like, you know, mass control would be the only outcome like the Hunger Games. That would be the only reason all this is happening. Um, and so they can make more and more money and we can all work for them. That's the only reason I can see why the reset is of any purpose. But then I also, on the other hand, as you guys know, I always say is the reset there to wake people up so we all move to this big love, which is the love frequency vibration. Because a lot of the time it's not going so well. Sushi, elbow, all the above, Trudeau, it hasn't gone so well. They've really not got anything much set in stone or there's not too much concrete. The only thing that really took off was the jab wheel, the picky wheel. That really did work very well, I've got to say. I still get visions of people lined up for those nasal swab tests and that. They weren't, people would queue up for six hours. Like what in the actual, I don't even know. Anyway, I won't go there, but hmm, let me know what your viewpoints are, guys, because I do find all this just so weird. It's so weird. Um, I'm just going to have to get some cards out of the drawer because I actually forgot them today. Hang on, guys. I'll be right back. Oh, that was lucky. They were nice and close by. Don't forget to stick around too, guys, for my viewer readings. Um, as well, I've got two surprise viewers to read today. How about we put, pull some, um, I'll put my glasses on, guys. Hidden Worlds, Oracle of the Hidden Worlds. We'll pull one of these. Okay. 
there's a garage sale going on across the road. Um, that's the gentleman's wife having the garage sale that died of the heart attack a while ago. Yes, another one. Um, and now she's just clearing everything out, probably financially too. It's sad, isn't it? Healing the earth. Well, there you go. Confirmation. Can you see that? Can you see that, guys? Healing the earth. It is healing. What's underneath that? Love, humility, and respect. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day, weren't we? People have to be more caring, more benevolent. It's happening. Big love. The world is changing. Actually, I might pull two more of these ones because I like these cards. Wow. Healing the earth. I'm getting that Michael Jackson song, of course. Heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. Oh, we got the lotus again. Flowering spirit, revelation, maturity. Oh, we get this reminder all the time just to keep opening up. We've, you know, and this is probably around other people too, emerging from the mud and the gunk and just blossoming into who they really are. We get the lotus a lot here on this channel. Very common. We love the lotus symbol, don't we, guys? It's very significant in the spiritual world because it means you're blossoming. You've found yourself. You're opening up again. Oh, insight. Magical tools, writing, and star crafting. Well, that's cute. It looks a bit like Dumbledore out of Harry Potter, doesn't it? Or is it Gandalf? Is that Lord of the Rings? I don't know. I get muddled up. They all look the same. Um, insight. We do have good insight. As be as detectors... We ha we're able to get um, visions without knowing why, meaning our insight, um, we're always like ahead of time. We've been given these magical tools of, well, it's our sixth sense really. We always talk about it here. It's interesting. And if you think of star crafting, he's looking up at the stars and writing. It's like ancient wisdom. That's how I see that. Someone who's like been on this earth for a long time, something like that, and you're using your skills and abilities, and that's what we've probably got over the lifetime that we've been here, because most of us here are probably well over 30, <laughs> we'll say that, not all, but most of us, so we have got like this, um, a lot of insight and wisdom around, especially around what's currently going on at the moment, all these shake-ups in the world <laughs> um let's pull a foxfire card this will be an outcome guys for today and then we'll do our viewer reads oh fleeting beauty oh so beauty is only fleeting isn't it but is it and I'm thinking beauty is within. So I'm getting that fleeting, meaning life is fleeting. That's what they're saying. Um, and, and I really believe that life is beautiful. If you think of this card, as much as it's like you would think of that and think of inner beauty, she's also, you know, looking at the tree, she's holding nature. Um, fleet, fleeting beauty. And I guess you could think of that too, that it's like when a flower blossoms, Oh, it is too, because look at the petals falling through her hair and everything. It's like when a flower blossoms, it probably only lasts a few days and then all the petals can fall off. And so beauty, it can be fleeting. So I think that's the message we've got to take from this card, guys. Enjoy every moment. Enjoy every moment of your life. Um, and beautiful things can be fleeting. It's like when a little bird, I often see a little bird, you know, land outside or something and I'd let you guys know because it's a fleeting moment that oh, there's a beautiful, you know, wren or something like that and then they fly off and it's a fleeting moment of beauty. And I think that's what they're saying to us. Make sure you really enjoy any fleeting beauty. Don't miss those beautiful moments. Enjoy them because life is fleeting and we're only here for a short time. Um, a lot of us have discovered that. We, well, that's what the awakening process does to you. It wakes you up to all the beautiful things that are around you, doesn't it? It really does. It, it's Life is incredible. It really is. 
we see it through those crystal glasses now through a very different lens. Um, all right, now I'm going to pull two more cards today for my viewers. Um, yesterday I pulled Danielle. Hi, Danielle. And I also pulled you, Lillian. So I hope you got your readings, guys, yesterday. All right, today I am going to pull two cards. Firstly, I'm going to do you, Sue Skinner. Hi, Sue. How are you? You always keep me up to date with everything that's going on where you're living. Let's pull you um, an Angel Answers card, Sue. We'll see what comes up. <laughs> I hope you guys are going all right with your aches and pains too. My neck's still pretty bad. My knee has good and bad days. I know a lot of you guys struggle. I know, Sue, you struggle as well. We, we're all very challenged at this present time in the big global shift, aren't we? Oh, I look for a sign, Sue. So you're strong, Sue. I'm getting, um, you've got that kind of lightning bolt energy there. You look at that. You, you're trying to strive forth and you're also looking for this lightning bolt moment to move you forward. Um, you have a lot going on in your life at the moment. Look for a sign. Hang on. The guides are saying to you, don't be perturbed by things. I know sometimes in life it feels like we all get setbacks and, um, we can get very frustrated um, by the things that sort of come at us in life. But that's what life is. Life life is a bumpy road. Life is a series of ups and downs. But what the guides are saying, Sue, is the ups uh, outweigh the, like, troughs. So when you're on the ups, just really enjoy them. And when you have a trough, just know it's just a short period of time and then you're going to have an up again. I'm just seeing this journey for you, Sue. It's like undulating hills going up. They're not even mountains. They're just hills. They're just little undulations that you... Um, and, and look, all of us go through it. Look for a sign. But I am getting that for you. It's like undulating hills. You go up and then you go down. You go up and then you go down. It's like you see things really clearly and then you lose sight of things because you go down into the valley and then you have to work your way back up and then you can see things again. So I feel you have this, but that's okay, Sue, because it's a learning journey. Life is a learning journey. And sometimes you know what's really weird. Eckhart Tolle actually says sometimes you need to be in the valley. Um, if you've ever watched a video, there's a video Eckhart Tolle has, I'm not sure what it's called, um, but he talks about sometimes you don't always wanna be on the mountain Sometimes it's it's good to be in the valley and lay low. And we talk about that here. It's like staying out of sight. It's like being in the bear cave. Sometimes there's times where you need to be down low so you don't see things. And this could be your guidance, like looking for signs too. Because remember your guides who are always protecting you as well from things. So there's some things they don't want you to see or they might be guiding you away from. So nothing wrong with being in the valley. It's about being humble sometimes. And um, see, there's people, and this is the other um, thing I'm getting from this Eckhart Tolle visual that they're giving me. Some people like to be really noticed and like to stand out from the crowd and be right on the top. And some people don't. And, and it's by um, being unintrusive that gives you strength and power. So when you're in those valleys, you're meant to be there, Sue. So when you're up, you're up. But when you're down, that's okay too. It's just the journey of life, these undulating hills that you go through. So that's why we're getting that look for a sign because it's very important. Your guidance is very important, Sue. Um, well, it's saying to your safety. But what I mean about safety is about your protection of your energy. You're a person who can get very zapped easily and drained of energy. You take a lot on board. You feel a lot of things. You're very, um, well, you're very sensitive. Um, and you're very endearing. You're a very thoughtful person. So the reason the guides take you down sometimes into the valley is because that's where you're meant to be at that time. I hope that makes sense to you. There's times you need to be up here in your wisdom and strength and power, but there's times you need to stay safe down in the valley, and that's why the guides take you on this up-and-down journey. Um, 
it, they do it for your own protection. Um, because sometimes we're not aware of things and we're we're just not honed in on these things, but our higher mind, our higher consciousness knows, oh, I need to get Sue to go this way because this is going to be better outcome for her in the long run. This is the kind of thing I'm getting for you, Sue. I hope that makes sense. So look for a sign and listen to that guidance. But I think you're very good at listening to your guidance. I feel like you hear things very clearly. And, and it might be the unspoken word, but you still hear it. So you've got very good antenna that tunes in. It's very, very good. Your antenna are very good. So keep looking for those signs, Sue. Um, hang on a sec. It says you're very, very gifted. You're very, very gifted on intuition. Your intuition is one of your biggest strengths. You, you get it very loud and very clear. Um, and it makes a big difference in your life. Like they're saying, if you were to ignore that, you would go down the wrong path. You would veer off the, you would go down the beaten track is what the guides are saying. So keep looking for your signs and keep listening to your gut feelings, your instincts, your knowing, your awareness. Um, and the guides are saying too, you're a very capable person. You're a very capable person at navigating life. Um, yeah, physically, you know, we might not be all on it at the moment. A lot of us aren't. You're not alone there, Sue. But they're saying you've still got really good capabilities in your mind of how to navigate um, the ship, like how to navigate the rough waters um, because you listen you listen to the messages that you're given. Um, and they're showing me an anchor of a boat, like speaking of the ship. They're showing me an anchor of the boat, but they're showing me it like in a picture frame. It's up on your wall. You pulled up anchor a long time ago and you have learnt to flow with life. I feel like you're very, very good at flowing with life. Um, you don't you don't fight and resist things. You you actually go with things very well. I feel that's your, you're almost getting an award in a, in a frame of an anchor off the boat because you pulled up anchor a long time ago and you know that's the key to um, moving through life is to actually flow with it. So it's like a permanent fixture in this picture frame because you look at it and it reminds you of, you're not anchored to the past anymore. You've let it go. That's really, that's great to hear. That's what we all have to do, Sue. We have to take a leaf out of your book and not stay anchored to the past. And the guides are saying there's nothing wrong with looking at it and acknowledging it and recognizing your past. But the anchor is a symbol to you that you're flowing now. You're flowing down the stream. You've turned the oars of your boat and you're flowing really well. You're just going with it, Sue. Um. And that's why you get given really good signs because you don't miss them. You actually see them and you hear them and you sense them and you know them. Oh, so you've got the anchor now. <laughs> that's really lovely, Sue. You're flying really well. That's just what I'm getting for you. Let's pull you a soul expression card as well. Oh, dragon. Meditate with this card to feel the loving support of dragon energy. Mm. Mm, can't get it. There we go. I have to do it that way. In front of my face, maybe? No. Sometimes they pick up and sometimes they don't. Mm. Can't get it. Sorry, Sue. Um, meditate with this card to feel the loving support of dragon energy. We often talk about dragon energy here, I know. Louise, you get dragons a lot, don't you? Um, dragons are like the protectors. That's what I feel. I feel like you are protected, Sue. And not only with your guidance and your spirit guides, but I feel like the universe kind of protects you. Dragon energy. Mm. And when I think of dragons, I always think of, if you've watched Merlin, if you haven't watched Merlin, maybe go and watch it, Sue. It's such a brilliant show. There's a dragon in there who guides Merlin. Um, he gives him information. Um... He's, he's like full of wisdom and, 
and knowledge. That's what I'm getting with the dragon energy. Meditate this card to feel the loving support of dragon energy. Yeah, dragon energy is, is your wisdom and your knowledge. So that's also saying listen to your own wisdom and knowledge and trust it, Sue. Don't be fearful of making decisions because you make really good decisions. You're a very good decision maker. And, the, and they're saying the one thing you do with your decisions, you never hurt people. You're very kind, you're very caring, you're very giving. Um, and that's the one thing that people really see in you. And maybe in a strange way they see you like that dragon energy. They might come to you for the wisdom. That's what I'm getting. You could actually be like the dragon energy to other people, Sue, that you give them the wisdom and knowledge. And, and it's saying like confidence as well to make their decisions. That's what I'm feeling. Um, and I feel that's with family and friends. I feel like people come to you and they see you as the dragon. That's what I'm getting. Oh, that's really lovely, Sue. I hope that helps you just to know that you do make a difference to other people's lives too. But yeah, if you haven't checked out Merlin, it's a great movie. The dragon plays a big part in that. Um, it's a series actually. I really love Merlin. It's very mystical and the dragon's important in that show. Mm, just reminds me of that. Okay, the next person I'm going to pull um, today is Adam Day. Hi, Adam. You always write to me as well um on my channel and i know not everybody writes to me that's fine i'll get to you all um some just like because their lives get busy i understand that um let's pull you an angel answer adam <coughs> got this tickle in my throat today guys it's weird there's something better mm, okay this is interesting isn't it um, Adam, I feel like you know you've got abundance. When I look at this card, I think of abundance in your hands. You know you've got a, a lot of abundance. Um, I feel like you've got a pretty good life. I feel like you have good people around you. You're in a pretty good situation. Um, I don't feel you're in a dire situation. I feel like you've got a lot of abundance. Um, but I feel like you accept that as your lot in life. I feel you don't have to. When I see this card, I'm seeing the wings. I'm seeing the light energy in the third eye chakra. I feel like you can create more, a lot more abundance for yourself. There's something better. I always, I'm feeling that you're, I feel, I know you're spiritually awakened. We know you are. I'm getting that third eye energy there, which means you see things, you know things. You, you've got this very, open third eye that has very good awareness your antenna are up you're very sharp you're very in tune but i feel you accept things as this is your lot in life and that's it and it's that's what the card's saying it's actually not there's there's something better there's always something better there's always something more um you can always improve your life you can always let more things in adam that's what i'm getting for you you think this is just where you're at and that You've, you've kind of got this acceptance that this is it. Um, I've, I'm here. I've made it. This is as far as I can go. And I feel they're showing me a timeline. And they're showing me like you from birth. And then you moved along your timeline. And here you are. And you kind of put this. It's like a roadblock. It's showing me you've put the roadblock there. You've put this. It's showing me like a black and yellow roadblock sign. And, and you're stuck there. you but you've put the roadblock there. Nobody else has put the roadblock there. Um, it's interesting. And and what I feel it is, is that you think that's all you deserve, that that's all you deserve. And look, that could come from childhood um, indoctrination as well. Like, you know, this is all you're going to have. This is the best you're going to be. Um, things parents say to us without even knowing that it's going into our subconscious mind. Um, I feel, Adam, and I said it to someone the other day, you would also do very well with doing Paul McKenna, the hypnosis guy, about I, I can improve your abundance or I can make you rich. Not rich as in money. Well, that would be a bonus. But rich as in a richer life. You've got to move this roadblock that you have in your life, Adam, um, because you're the one that's stopping yourself from well, it's like expanding, but it's expanding in life, expanding in abundance. There's something better. 
remove the roadblock. Do whatever you can do to remove the roadblock. Don't accept that where you are now is all there is because it's not all there is. That's what the guides are saying. There's more for you to come, Adam. There is more for you to come. And that's exciting. Embrace it. Embrace anything exciting in you that's coming to your life. It's wonderful. Get that roadblock out of the way, Adam. That's what I'm getting for you. Maybe we pull one of these um, soul expression cards might give us a hint around some of this. The roadblock, it's no good, Adam. It's it's stunting your growth in, in all aspects of your life, all aspects. And it's not it's not your fault. It's just something that has been embedded in your subconscious mind. I'd say through your parents, through your growing up experience, like you own this is your lot in your life. When you get to this point on your timeline, Adam, that's it. You know, it might be it could be anything like Oh, you've bought your car. Here you go. At what, 25, you bought your car, right? Keep going a little bit. Or you might have bought a house or you might have achieved saving, you know, $20,000 in your bank account, whatever it is, and that's it. That's your lot in life, Adam. Well, it isn't. That's what the guides are saying. It isn't. There's more to come, Adam. Just move the <clears throat> roadblock source. You are divine. You are made of love. You are straight from source. So that to me is the God sending you that energy. Focus back on your source. Focus back on your power. Focus back on your spirit. Um, oh, see, when you think about a timeline, it's a, it's a materialistic thing, isn't it? If you think about it, it's just um, what you're ticking off and achieving. It's like goal setting. You've stopped the goal setting. That's what the guides are saying. Start resetting your goals. Just because, and I think I was talking to Chris the other day about this, just because all this is happening over here and the reset and all this kind of stuff's happening and we're kind of half waiting for it, don't wait for it. It's a bit like Chris. It's reset your goals. I'm going to pull you one more, um, actually, Adam. Hang on. Oh, my cards are all back to front, guys. Oh, there you go. Here's how you do it. Meditation. I take the time to meditate. Connect with my higher self and honor my divine connection to source. Well, there you go. All about source again. So I'd be meditating. And like I say, Adam, meditation can be so many things. It could be cooking, listening to music at the same time. That's what I do when I'm cooking. I find it very meditative. Meditative isn't just sitting in the yoga position and going, hum. That's not what meditation is. Meditation to me is focusing on your breath, yes, slowing yourself down, but anything that gets you out of that breathless feeling and anxiety um, and, and how to move your life forward, you know? It's like getting back to creativity and your passions, Adam. That's what you've got to do. I feel like you've lost your way. You're not setting goals. Um, you know, for example, Jen and I do bits of furniture up. That's something that we enjoy doing because you get that sense of achievement. Everybody does different things. Adam, you'll work out what yours are, but you've got to remove this roadblock that's the biggest thing i'm getting for you you've put a roadblock on your timeline and now it's time to remove it all right um i'll see if there's one more thing guys and then we'll wrap up today i hope you enjoyed your readings i'm so glad to get your beautiful feedback everybody about your little card readings it's just a bit of light fun look my videos are for entertainment purposes as you know guys take from what you choose um let me see if there's one more thing to close with today <clears throat> Oh, I'm getting this song. <laughs> I don't know if he sings it. Higher, baby. Getting higher, baby. Getting higher, baby. He sings that song. Uh, oh, I can't think of it. There's a song that talks about being higher, higher. Oh, I can't think of it. Oh, and that's, hopefully I'll think of it later. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see if there's one more thing. You know, I get muddled up at the end, guys.
Oh, they're hitting me with everything. Oh, I get so many songs at the end. You got to picture it. They just go through everything. I'm getting fight for your rights. I'm getting people are people. And you know what they mean. I get everything. They just go. Boop, 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 boop. Let's see if we can pluck something out. Hang on. I'm getting that song by Culture Club. And time, you could have been so much more. In time, it's precious, I know. In time, it could have been. I want you to go and play that song today, Time. Time is really precious. So go and enjoy every moment of it, guys. Look, have the best weekend, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye from Australia. Go play that. I'm sure it's Culture Club Boy George Time, isn't it? It's a beautiful song. All right, I'm going to say goodbye. Have a wonderful day. Hit the like buttons. Please comment down below and don't forget to subscribe if you are new. I love hearing from you guys. And keep looking out for my viewer card readings. <laughs> They're just a bit of light fun. Take care, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.